The old world is known for many things, colonizing almost the entire world, having cuisine that ranges from heavenly to the 40th circle of hell, and more. One thing Europe is also known for is its trains. Railways crisscross the continent, going from Narvik, Norway, to Malaga, Spain. One curious phenomenon of the European railways is the sheer number of private rail operators across the continent. These cover every market segment, from low-cost budget travel, to high-speed services, to luxury services. Some of these are great, and some of these are the pre-2020 British rail system. In today's video, we'll explore private rail entrepreneurship in Europe, why it is so prevalent, and what it could teach the world. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free, and it helps out a ton. Thanks, and on to the video. Europe was, and still is dominated by state-owned train operators. The Czech Republic has České dráhy, Germany has Deutsche Bahn, the Netherlands has NS, etc. However, with increasing frequency, we can see trains run by private corporations on our railways. Experiments with private rail companies were first seen in Sweden in the 1980s. Because of worsening budget outlooks, the country decided to liberalize the railways, separating the train operators from infrastructure operators, and opening the country's rails to private competition with the state-owned Swedish state railways. Taking inspiration from Sweden, the European Union released EU Directive 91-440 in 1991. This piece of legislation effectively separated train operators and the operators of infrastructure. This means that now, the companies that own the trains themselves, and the companies that own the tracks, the signaling infrastructure, the stations, and more are separate. As an example of this, let's look at my home country, the Czech Republic. Since the founding of its predecessor, Czechoslovakia, in 1918, the trains and all the supporting infrastructure was owned by one single state-owned corporation, called Československé státní dráhy until 1993, and after the split of Czechoslovakia in 1993 onward, České dráhy. The Czech Republic was pretty slow in implementing the aforementioned EU directive, only doing so in 2003. After the 1st of January 2003, České dráhy split in two, a new, reformed České dráhy, which focused exclusively on operating train services throughout the country, and Správa železniční dopravní cesty, commonly abbreviated as SŽDC, which owned and operated the infrastructure. This EU directive opened the door to private rail competition by providing open access to European railways to private companies. It also resolved a potential conflict of interest that could have been created, if a legacy rail company flat out refused access to their infrastructure to potentially better private competitors in favor of their own, potentially inferior services. After all, competition is always good for the customer. However, rail privatization isn't always executed well. Let's look at an example of what happens when private companies are allowed to run rampant with less than ideal oversight. In 1979, when the neoliberal queen of privatization, Margaret Thatcher, was elected as Prime Minister of the UK, a wave of privatization swept the nation. Creatively named enterprises, like British Gas, British Airways, or British Telecom were privatized. One entity her government didn't dare to touch was British Rail. I think that British Rail stayed state-owned because of these factors. Firstly, Running a train system, especially to rural areas, where voters overwhelmingly supported Thatcher's conservative party, is unprofitable. A privatized British Rail would either have to be subsidized, which was absolutely unacceptable in Thatcher's vision, or there would have to be service cuts to rural, unprofitable routes, which would turn local conservative voters against the party. Secondly, the EU directive mentioned at the start of the video wasn't in effect yet, which would make privatization harder. This is why even Thatcher herself said that privatization of British Rail would be, quote, a privatization too far, unquote. You know that privatizing something is a bad idea when even Margaret fucking Thatcher is against it. However, Thatcher was forced out of office in 1990, and a new conservative government, led by John Major, entered office. The new government wasn't so apprehensive about rail privatization, and in 1993, they passed the Railway Act 1993. This law broke up British Rail and gave private companies the right to operate rail routes in Great Britain on a franchising basis. The government would give exclusive contracts to private companies to run certain routes. 
This system was fully influenced by market forces, as there were no state-owned competitors since British Rail was broken up. Northern Ireland was exempted from this. Train services in the region stayed under public ownership. However, this experiment in rail privatization failed. The UK's trains arrive on time only about 86% of the time, which is below the European average. Next, the promised increased efficiency of private ownership failed to materialize. UK train fares are one of the most expensive in Europe. As a result of this, the UK government paused the franchising scheme in 2020. So far, as of May 2024, the system is de facto nationalized, but is still de jure in the hands of private companies. Thankfully, other countries in the EU didn't adopt this model of private rail. Most have kept their legacy state-owned operators, but still allowed private competition. For this segment, I want to look at my home country of Czech Republic, since I'm the most familiar with our system. Currently, 109 private companies have the necessary approval to operate on the Czech railway network. However, most of these are for freight services. Only a few of them run regular passenger services. There are two types of route in this country, subsidized and unsubsidized. Subsidized services are ones that aren't profitable by themselves and have to take subsidies from the state or regional governments to stay financially viable. An example of this is the route from Kuřim to Tišnov, two small towns in the southern Moravian region. I doubt that running this service is profitable. And so, the operator gets paid to run this route. An example of a profitable, unsubsidized route is the route from Prague to Brno, the two largest cities in the country. Any half-decent operator should have no problem making a profit on this ultra-high demand route, even though no one should ever be forced to go to Brno, of all places. The first privately run train service, running from Trutnov to Svoboda nad Upo, started in 1997. The operator, called GW Train, mostly operates subsidized regional services, for which they have been contracted by the government. GW Train mostly uses older, diesel-based rolling stock, which is, in my opinion, adequate to serve the smaller towns and villages that GW Train operates in. After this first wave of private train service, progress stalled. Negotiations were being held in the mid-2000s about the entrance of new, private operators onto Czech railways, but the next big leap came later, in 2011. In 2011, the second largest carrier after the state-owned České dráhy, Regiojet, entered the market. Regiojet, with its bright yellow livery, opened up service between the cities of Prague and Havířov. Since then, they have expanded to new markets, running trains to Brno, Ostrava, Havířov, and even internationally to Vienna, Košice, Humene, etc. Today, Regiojet services account for 11% of the Czech rail transport market. In 2012, another large competitor, called Leo Express, entered the market. Their first route was from Prague to the border town of Bohumín. Since then, they have expanded, with services to Ostrava, Košice, Žilina and Wroclaw. Leo Express is the fourth most popular train operator in the country, controlling a 1.3% share of the market. Running a private train operator is an extremely capital-intensive business. Because of this, the question of why would anyone invest in this business may arise. In my opinion, there are multiple reasons behind why investors are seemingly eager to launch new train operators. Firstly, before the EU directive went into effect, state-owned operators had almost exclusive monopolies on the rail, meaning that there was no incentive to innovate and to lower prices. After all, if you wanted to go somewhere on a train, you had no choice but to take the legacy operator. This meant that the industry was ripe for new competitors. Secondly, there were opportunities in completely new markets. For example, let's look at Germany's 9 euro ticket experiment of 2022. In the summer of 2022, Germany released this nationwide public transport ticket, creatively named the 9 euro ticket. For just 9 euros per month, about 10 US dollars, people received unlimited travel on local and regional public transport, which included trains. As a consequence of this, demand for train travel doubled. This showed that there is significant demand for low-cost train travel. As of now, there are numerous low-cost train operators across Europe, such as Flix Train in Germany, 
On the other end of the spectrum, there is smaller but still significant demand for luxury train travel. While the legacy operators, like České dráhy in my country, offer first-class seats, which I have actually taken on a trip from Hep to Prague, I don't think the extra price was worth it in my opinion. However, private operators like Leo Express in the Czech Republic offer way more luxurious services. In the case of Leo Express, they offer a class called Premium, which includes a premium food and beverage menu included in the ticket price, a massive seat, priority service, etc. Compared to České Drahy's first class offering, which only included a slightly better seat and a free bottle of water, this seems like a massive upgrade. In my opinion, private competition on our rails will bring new, innovative services to our railways. Anyways, thank you so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you'd like to support the channel, I've put affiliate links to the equipment I use to make these videos in the description. If you buy something from these links, you will directly support the channel and that would be greatly appreciated. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramly and I'll see you next time, bye! Since the founding of its predecessor, Czechoslovakia, in 1918, the trains and all the supporting infrastructure was owned by one single state- <sniffs> bro. However, rail privatization always- an example of a profitable, unsubsidized route is the route from Prague to Brno. The second... Huh? What? <laughs>